ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله as we witness the atrocities happening in gaza and the blindness of the world to them it becomes important for a person to recognize and realize what victory actually looks like for a believer we see that there are over 13000 people that have lost their lives perhaps much more than this injured and over a million people displaced and we see this calamity seeming to be getting worse and worse and worse when we look at this particular situation of our brothers and sisters in gaza it becomes important for a muslim to conceptualize what victory actually looks like because a person might become confused a person might become confounded when they hear the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words of promise wherein allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antum al-a'launa in kuntum mu'minin do not grieve do not despair you will be victorious if you have iman if you have belief then you will be victorious and a person they might ask what type of victory is dead children what type of victory is a city that has been eviscerated what type of victory is a city that has been starved of food and water what type of victory is the ignorance uh, not ignorance but rather the the knowledge that they know that all of these atrocities are happening and still they turn the entire world uh, especially the powers that have the ability to stop this turn a blind eye when we look at all of this we need to go back to what victory means let us go back to the anbiya ali musallatu wassalam Nuh alayhi salam gave da'wah for 950 years and his people rejected him and thereafter he made a dua qala nuh rabbi la tadhar 'ala al-ardi min al-kafirin dayyara nuh alayhi salam used that dua that every prophet gets and he made that dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not leave any disobedient disobeying or disbeliever uh, as an inhabitant on this planet and you could say that that was a type of victory after a lot of years of struggle when we look at musa alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the Quran the story of Musa alayhi salam and his struggle with Fir'aun and when he leads the people of Bani Israel across the Red Sea and wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa id faraqna bikum al bahra fa anjaynakum wa aghraqna ala Fir'aun the famous story that we all know wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned Fir'aun and his army and saved Musa alayhi salam that you could be seen as a type of victory when we look at Isa alayhi salam even though there were those that killed him or they thought they killed him we don't believe this as muslims wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu walakin shubbiha lahum but those people that thought that they killed him or even those that took him as a god at the end of the day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when isa alayhi salam comes back wa in min ahli al-kitab illa la yu'minanna bihi qabla mawtih that there will be no person from ahli al-kitab from the jews or the christians those that sought to kill him or those that also tried to turn him into a God except that they will believe in him as a prophet. When you go to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you see his victory, inna fatahna laka fatha mubina. After those 23 years of struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within 30 years makes it such that Islam is the dominant civilization on the planet. Uh, and we see the victory of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In today's khutbah we'll talk about a different type of victory. A type of victory that sometimes you don't conceptualize or think about because for a person thinking from a sec 
secular standpoint, death is the ultimate defeat. Death is the ultimate defeat. When a person is dead, then that is it. And how can there be any sense of victory after that point? We will discuss in today's khutbah the story of Ashab al Ukhdud, wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al Buruj the story of the people of the trench. Qutila Ashab al Ukhdud. Cursed were the people of the trench. Now, who were the people of the trench? It is mentioned that around 40 to 70 years before the Prophet ﷺ was born in the Himyar Kingdom in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen that there was a person by the name of Dhun Nawas and the Mufassirun they differ as to the religion of Dhun Nawas the majority of them they say he was Jewish some of them they say that he was a Mushrik like Ibn Kathir a person that would have been a polytheist nonetheless he was a person he was a person that was a ruler and uh, uh, in that particular area and he was a tyrant. It is mentioned about Dhun Nawas that uh, when he was uh, in, his, in his particular kingdom, a story mentioned in the, uh, in, the, in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, wherein there was a king being Dhun Nawas and there was a sahir, a magician and also a young boy. In this story, Allah SWT, he, he elucidates this lengthy story of Ashab. It's mentioned that Dhun Nawas, this particular leader at the time, he had a magician that he would use to cure the blind, to heal the sick. And this person used to deal with the jinn. So it is mentioned that this magician came to Dhun Nawas and he told Dhun Nawas that I am getting old, I need a disciple that I can be able to teach my craft to so that when I am no longer around, he can take over and be from those that continues this tradition of sihr or magic which is haram in Islam and they would use this to cure the blind and the sick and those that had particular illnesses so the king he goes and he finds a bright young boy and this bright young boy he is tasked with learning from this sahir from this magician and it just so happened that one day on his way to the sahir he finds himself stopped or he sees a person on the road a rahib a monk that was a Christian monk at the time and when we understand that in the time of the fatra between prophets, what would have been the correct religion before the Prophet Sallallahu arrived on the scene? It would have been those that believed in Isa السلام, as a prophet and they continued along with his traditions, the muwahidun from among the Christians. Those that believed in Tawheed from among the Christians. Not those that after the year 325 in the Council of Nicaea, then they both started to believe in the Trinity, but those that stayed firm to the fact of the true message of Isa السلام. So this monk was on the road, he was from among those Christians. And when this boy sat next to this monk, on the side of the road, he became impressed by what he was hearing. And every day he would listen to this monk, and thereafter he would go to the sahir, to the magician. One day it happened that the sahir, the magician, he got angry and he beat up this kid for being late. So he complained to the rahib, he complained to the monk. And the monk told him that if the sahir asks you why you are late, tell him my family family delayed me and on the way back come back to me and learn from me again and if your family asks you why you are late tell them the sahir delayed me so this kid he would learn from the monk and he would learn from the sahir simultaneously he would learn from the monk in the early part of the day then he would learn from the sahir then he would go back to the monk and then he would go back to his family it happened that one day there was an animal that was released in the town that they were in an animal, perhaps a lion, perhaps a leopard, perhaps a bull, but this animal was causing a lot of havoc in and around that particular town. And at this, the boy, he made a dua. He said, Allahumma in kana amru rahib, ahabba ilayka min amr sahir, faqtul hadihi dabba, faqtul hadihi dabba. So this, ma this boy, he made this dua, that, O oh Allah, if the religion of the rahib, of the monk, is more beloved to you than the religion of the sahir, of the magician then kill this animal and he took a rock and he threw it at this animal and the animal died he conveyed this message to the uh, monk the rahib and the monk he told him something very interesting that we need to always remember he said the monk told this boy that you have received you have attained a high rank you have surpassed me in your piety and because this has happened you will definitely be tested and that is something we need to understand as well the, uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentions in some ahadith for example he says ashaddu nas bala'an al anbiya 
thummal amthal fal amthal. Those that are tested the most are the prophets and then those closest to them and those closest to them. So when you look at the people of Gaza, we might see them as being physically destroyed, being they are being physically attacked. But spiritually they are alive. Perhaps physically they are dead, but spiritually they are alive. And we contrast that to us, wherein we have everything. And still sometimes we have a negative opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are physically alive, but spiritually dead. Those people in the Gaza, many of them you see in the videos. Non-Muslims are impressed by their faith. That despite everything, they still say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. They still believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They still have a sense of optimism after all of this. And those people that are being tested in this way, they have a status that us living here in safety and security can never attain. Because those closest to the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam are those that are the most severely tested. ثم الأمثل فالأمثل. And then those lesser and then those lesser. So we see in this particular story, this is what the monk, he tells this boy. He also tells him that if you are told to release my name, expose who I am, do not do so. It just so happened that sometime later, a companion of Dun Nawas, a companion of the king, he was one that was blind and he wanted cure from this. So the king instructed him to go to this boy. And this companion of the king brought a lot of gifts for the boy. And he said that if you clear, if you cure my blindness, all of these gifts are yours. This boy, he says that I do not cure, but my Lord cures. And if you believe in my Lord, I will make dua to him that he cures you. And this man, this companion of the king, he agrees. And this boy, he makes dua, and this man, he is cured. The king then confronts this particular man, and he says that, who has cured you? This man, he said, Rabbi, my Lord. The king, Dun Nawas, then says, meaning me, uh, meaning me, and then this man he says, No, my Lord and your Lord who is Allah. This upsets and angers the king, and he decides to torture this companion that he had. He tortures him and wants him to release the name of the person that told him this. Under duress, this man he releases the name of the boy, and then the boy is brought, and then the boy is questioned as well that who is your Lord? Is it me? This man he says, No, your Lord and my Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The king gets angered by this and then he decides to torture this boy as well wanting him to reveal the name of the one that taught him all of this and under duress under this torture the boy cannot hold himself and he releases the name of the monk the monk the rahib is then brought and he is asked to renounce his religion uh, he is asked to renounce his religion but he refuses to do so so Esau is brought and this monk, this Rahib, he is cut in half. Thereafter, the companion of the king is asked the same question. He is said, he is told that you see what happened to this monk, you renounce your religion, he refuses to do so, the saw is brought and this person is also cut in half. Thereafter, the king turns to the boy. Dun Nawas, he turns to the boy and he tells this boy, renounce your religion, he refuses. So he takes this boy to a tall cliff, to a high cliff, and he tells his soldiers to push him off. The soldiers, when they take this boy to this cliff and they attempt to push him off, this boy, he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that suffice me against these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it such that those that are on top of this cliff, they fall down and the boy is saved through this dua. He walks back to the king and the king is astonished by this and he makes a second attempt at murdering him and he tells his soldiers another group of soldiers because the soldiers were disposable he tells this group of soldiers take him to a lake and dump him overboard throw him overboard and again this boy when he is on this boat he makes a dua those that were on the boat on the boat with him from the soldiers they fall overboard he is saved and he goes back to the king and then he tells the king something there is only one way that you will be able to kill me and the king he asks him how is this he is it is mentioned to him that you need to call all of the inhabitants of this town of the Himyar kingdom in the southern Arabian Peninsula call them all to a town 20,000 of them and uh, bring them to this square and tie me to a tree trunk 
and then take a bow and before you shoot say Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam in the name of Allah the Lord of the boy and shoot so this king he does exactly this he says Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam he shoots and the boy passes away those 20,000 people that were around when they witnessed this particular event all of them they embraced Islam they embraced the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this angered the king now we learn something else from here as well this boy he sacrificed himself for the sake of da'wah and subhanallah we see with all of the atrocities happening in Gaza how many non-muslims when they look into this and they see the faith and the steadfastness of those muslims in Gaza how many of them embraced Islam in the same way that we see in this particular story and that is a type of victory that sometimes we forget about when people were ignorant about Palestine when people were ignorant about the Quran and then they see these videos and they see the faith of the muslimin that are not willing to give up their religion they are living in the land of al ribat in the land of uh, 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 in the land in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this is a land that should be protected a land that is honored ardul muqaddasa and they do not wish to give up that land and they protect it in the way that they are and they still have firm faith in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they see this this impresses them and when they become muslim then this is a type of victory for islam sometimes we do not even conceive as the story goes further it is mentioned that Dun Nawas now he decided to construct a trench and that is mentioned in Surah Al-Buruj Qutila Ashabul Ukhdud Cursed are the people of a trench and nari Dhatil Waqud In this trench it is mentioned that there was fuel and fire He lit up this trench with fuel and fire and they were sitting thereby and subhanallah this is a reminder for us and also for the leaders and what is happening to the believers they were witness to all of this all of those leaders are seeing the same videos we have seen all of the leaders are seeing the same lies that we have seen all of the leaders are seeing the same atrocities we are seeing and when they have that power and they're sitting on the sidelines and they're witness to all of this this will be a proof against them on the day of judgment and also it's a reminder for us to not be from those that are sitting on the sideline do not be from among those but at the very least feel what is happening in your heart for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says Wasallam he says the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he tells us the parable of a believer to another believer in terms of their love in terms of their compassion in terms of their kindness is like that of a body that when one part of it is hurt the rest of the body is sleepless cannot go to sleep and in a state of fever if you find yourself like this that you are different from October 7th till now you cannot sleep and it is the only thing on your mind you cannot enjoy your hobbies then this is a sign of your iman and if you do not feel this way then you are from those that has a lacking of their iman do not be from one of those that is sitting on the sideline but do whatever you can in whatever capacity you're able to do so to help the people of Palestine because this will be a proof for you and not against you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he goes on and he goes on to say something else as well he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those that test and try the believers and the word fitna can also mean to burn as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran those that are burned in the trench those that are burned by missiles when a people are doing this towards the believers and then they do not repent for them is the punishment of Jahannam and a severe burning punishment that they will all receive when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the believers and by the way there is one person in the story one lady in this story that is mentioned in the hadith as well it is mentioned about her that as these 20,000 people were being forced into the trench they all went in they were not even hesitating because they did not want to give up their religion but this one lady this one sister she hesitated for a second and her infant spoke she had an infant with her and that is one of those infants that spoke in infancy like Isa alayhi salam and she goes on to say 
Be patient, my mother, for you are upon the truth. And she went in and she fell into this particular trench as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he discusses the believer, he says, and that is the part and important lesson of today's khutbah. That is the important lesson of today's khutbah. Allah SWT says, as for the believers, they will have gardens beneath, beneath which rivers flow. And he mentions about them the fact that they did not give up their religion. Allah SWT mentions about them, even if they were to lose their life, that can still be a type of victory. And that is something that we need to remember. That is the great victory. Those particular people, irrespective of their circumstance, they hold the religion of Islam. Contrast that to us. Sometimes we become people that because of the fact that Allah SWT tested us with our finances, with our relationships, with our health, we decide we don't want to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Remember when fact that if you don't worship Allah the only person it harms is yourself as Musa alayhi salam, he tells his people, "In takfuru antum wa man fil ardi jamia, fa inna Allah laghaniun hamid." If you decide to disobey Allah, and all mankind decides to do the same, Allah is independent; He is not in need of any of your worship. Be one that has a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa taala, irrespective of your circumstance, and that will grant you success. Like the people of Gaza that are not willing to give up their faith, that is a type of victory. Sometimes we do not perceive. They are people whose hearts are alive even though their hearts physically are dead. And we are people whose hearts are dead, even though physically we are alive. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentions in a hadith, that None of you should pass away, except that you think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have husnul dhan of your creator. And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions this three days before he passed away. We also see that sometimes within our own life, there might be situations in which you held fast to Islam and we're hoping for victory in this dunya, but it does not come. But as long as we held on to the traditions and the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Kabir. Let us mention some examples. Let's say for example, a person, he wants to purchase a house as all of us would wish to. But this person, he fears falling into riba. And we're not talking about the hukum itself. Many of the scholars have said it's haram. Many of them, they said it's allowed with certain conditions to buy a house with mortgage. Nonetheless, let's say a person is practicing the quality of al wara of cautious piety, because the Prophet Sallallahu he says, even this will grant you reward. You're fearing to go into haram, even if it is halal, but you fear it and you decide not to do it, this will grant you reward. What is the proof of this? The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the wal haram abayin, wa baynahuma umurun mujtabihat, la ya'lamuhunna kathiru min nas, fa man attaqa shubuhat, faqad istabra li deenihi wa irdih. He mentions in this hadith, in al halal abayin wal haram abayin. Halal is clear, the haram is clear. Wa baynahuma umur mujtabihat. And between them, there are matters which are dubious. And if a person wishes to protect themselves and their deen, then they will stay away from these particular things and that will grant them victory as well. So let's say, for example, a person, he does this. And he thinks to himself, Allah will grant me more. Because that is what we believe. If you stay away from haram, Allah will grant you more. So he tries to save his money in a halal way. And let's say, for example, he loses his job. Let's say, for example, the economy as we know today, everything becomes expensive. And he passes away without having ever purchased a house. In this life, people would consider him to be a loser. Maybe his friends bought one with interest and they would consider him to be a loser, the one that did not have a house. But this person held on to something. ذلك الفوز الكبير. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they can, for example, also make it such that there's a court case between two people. Let's say, for example, and one of the party, parties was wrong, and the court sides with the wrong party. As happens in many situations, let's say, for example, the court sides with the wrong party. And it might see that this person loses everything. But after all of this, he does not become angry. He does not lose his morality. He does not become angry. He does not act in revenge. And he dies in this way, from the perspective of this dunya, he's a loser. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say? It could also be in a situation in which a person has a bad reputation among his peers. He embraces Islam, he becomes a much better person, but they still remember him by these bad habits that he has. And he dies in this way and the people remember him in a negative way. It might be that in the dunya, his rep reputation was destroyed. But as long as he turned back to Allah, he might not receive anything of good in this life, but he held on to his faith. 
ذلك الفوز الكبير. It might be in many other situations that this particular scenario might occur. It might be that you're good to your friends uh, and your colleagues and especially if you are good to your family and that family does not reciprocate any of that good but you understand the virtue of it. When you pass away they still insult you but you are one that held on to what was right even despite the fact that in this dunya you got nothing out of it. And that is one point that we need to remember with respect to our Muslim brothers and sisters in Gaza that that is a type of victory. Holding on to the deen of Islam is a type of victory. Sometimes victory does not come in the form of military victory even though we believe this will definitely happen. Allah SWT mentions in the Quran The Muslims will enter the masjid just as they did the first time. We believe this to be true but as all of these atrocities are happening let us remember the ultimate fact. وَتَرْجُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا يَرْجُونَ We have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala things that the other party does not have hope in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the Muslims in Gaza. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that understands what true victory actually looks like. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that does our part in helping our Muslim brothers and sisters in Gaza. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ذي ملكم ولساء المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرسل نبيه برسالات وأيده بالمعجزات رب الأرض رب السماوات أحمده أبلغ حمد وأكمله وسكاه وأشمله وشهد لا إله إلا الله الواحد الغفار وشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله المصطفى المختار صلى الله وسلم عليه وزاده فضل شرف لديه يا أيها الذين آمنوا أوصيكم أولا بتقوى الله فقد فاز المتقون إن الله ملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أصلح أهوى المسلمين اللهم أصلح أهوى المسلمين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في غزة اللهم انصر المسلمين المستضعفين في فلسطين اللهم انصر المسلمين المجاهدين الهدين في غزة اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك المشركين ودمر أعداء كأعداء الدين اللهم أهلك اليهود كما هلك تعاد وثمود ربنا آتهم ضعفين من العذاب والعنهم لعنا كبيرة إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله ذي مذكركم وشكره على مزدكم لذكر الله أكبر والله يع. علموا ما تصنع من الصلاه